Hello and thanks for joining us today. We've had an exciting week in Montgomery County with major developments and announcements towards our education, economic development, environmental stability and equity. On Wednesday, Montgomery College announced the Fall 23 opening of an education center in the East County. The center is the first major expansion from Montgomery College in over 20 years, and it's seven years after we held our first college classes from Montgomery College in our East County Regional Services Center. Less than a year from now, full coursework will be available in subjects like nursing, information technology, and daycare certification under one 55,000 square foot roof. This is something that's been needed in the East County for a long time. For years, expansion plans took advantage of the county's links to FDA, NIH, and other science-driven state departments near the Bethesda. We've been able to build the bioscience hub that rivals any in the nation up and down the I-270 corridor. Expansion from Rockville and Silver Spring and Germantown left East County behind. This center is the first step to an East County campus. If we look down the road 10 or 20 years, we can see an East County campus help us address some of the equity issues we face as a county. This facility will help the county retain and attract companies, new economic development opportunities, and create jobs. The expansion is being supported with an investment in the US 29 BRT flash line. Our capital budget has committed $40 million in transportation infrastructure improvements, making this development in White Oak a particularly good public-private partnership. Hillendale and Fairland are two communities that also stand to benefit thanks to the recently launched Ride-On Transit Route 27. Montgomery College is ranked number seven in the nation for community college. It has been building a reputation for meeting the socioeconomic needs of students and serving as a viable and affordable entry point to higher education in the county. Placing Montgomery College Education Center here will help this diverse community take advantage of opportunities close to home. A recent Montgomery College feasibility study found over 3,200 MC students in the East County commute at least one hour and sometimes more than two hours on public transit to get to their classes at other campuses. We had to do better and I'm so glad that everyone was on the same page to ensure the funding and vision for this new center. Training and advanced degrees are two keys to higher earnings. I look forward to seeing the kind of opportunities that develop and are born out of Montgomery College in these East County classrooms. Another big development this week is the ribbon cutting for the new electric bus charging depot and solar microgrid in Silver Spring. By 2026, we anticipate using the self-sustaining facility to be able to charge our fleet of 70 electric buses by then. Even today, with a little more than a dozen buses, it's the largest electric bus hub for public transportation in the nation. Our goal of replacing dozens of traditional buses will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 62% over the next 25 years, according to our development partner, Alpha Structure. The energy service company helped finance and build the microgrid so the county's upfront costs on the project were minimal. We have no doubt that this innovative project will soon be modeled everywhere throughout the nation as other jurisdictions get as serious as we have been on reducing their carbon footprints. I want to thank the Department of Transportation, Department of General Services, our state and federal delegations, and our partners at Alpha Structure for this game-changing project for both our transportation infrastructure needs and our efforts to combat climate change. We continue to monitor a slight uptick in COVID-19 cases, though our community threat level remains low. There are more non-COVID respiratory illnesses driving people to the hospital. This is very concerning, especially as we are heading into the winter months. We're specifically concerned about the number of children hospitalized with RSV, a common respiratory illness that is hitting communities across the nation earlier than normal. That may be driven by the fact that many children have not been exposed like this in quite a while. We may be ready to have our kids return to school and after school activities, but our immune systems have had quite a break from what they're used to in the past. We need all parents to be aware of RSV so it doesn't continue to spread. Our main concern and focus will continue to be the potential strain on our healthcare system this fall and winter. At the county's Boosterama last week at the Westfield Wheaton, more than 100 families received their shots. We had a steady stream of folks for three hours that we were there. 
I want to thank Westfield Wheaton and our partners, Latino Health Initiative, Port de Nuestra de Salud de and our DHS department for organizing this event. Getting folks their bivalent booster over the next three weeks prior to the beginning of the holiday season gatherings is critical. So far, only about 12.5% of county residents have gotten their bivalent booster, and 21% of those over 50 have taken the shot. These rates are about three times the national average, but those numbers are still way too low in order for you to have the protection that you need heading into the winter. Getting the flu shot is also a priority as this flu season is predicted to be one of the worst. The county has a free flu clinic next Thursday, November 10th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Dennis Avenue Health Center in Silver Spring. Appointments are required. And you can make one by visiting montgomerycountymd.gov flu. There are also many retailers in the community that also offer the flu vaccine. Vaccines are our best defense against viruses like COVID and the flu but you can still protect yourself by washing your hands regularly and staying away from those who are sick. Earlier this week, I joined the County Council in marking Carbon Monoxide Awareness Month. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas, and victims of carbon monoxide poisoning have no idea they are breathing a deadly poison. Every year, more than 400 Americans are killed by carbon monoxide poisoning. Many of these victims mistake the symptoms like headaches and dizziness and shortness of breath for the early signs of the flu. Since 2019, many existing homes in Montgomery County have been required to place carbon monoxide detectors outside bedrooms. They have been required in new construction in homes across Maryland since 2008. We know this can typically be a dangerous time of year with people who are switching on their heaters for the first time. This year, there are additional concerns because of the high cost of rent and inflation in general. Trying to keep your heating bill down is something that people do, often by buying these small room gas heaters instead of trying to heat their whole houses. And that can put you in a dangerous position. We don't want people to expose themselves to poison or a house fire because they're trying to avoid high heating costs. Using an oven or gas powered stove for heat can be a danger as well. According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, the most common source of carbon monoxide poisoning is an unvented space heater. Other common sources of carbon monoxide poisoning are malfunctioning appliances, clogged chimneys, exhaust from running automobiles, and closed garages. Please be mindful of CO this fall and winter and protect your family from the silent but deadly killer. Veterans Day is Friday, November 11th. It is designated as a day we pay tribute to all Americans who served in the military. In the week leading up to Veterans Day, you'll notice Montgomery County honoring military service through Operation Greenlight. There are an estimated 36,000 veterans living in Montgomery County, and Operation Greenlight is a symbolic gesture that organizers believe helps take the stress off of vets returning to civilian life. Studies show that between 44 to 72 percent of service members experience high levels of stress when they transition out of the military. By lighting buildings and facades green this November, participating groups are showing vets that we are behind them and that they have a green light to move on with life. This is also an important time to highlight the many resources available at the county, state, and federal level to help military members with that transition. You'll be able to see the county's green light shining starting Monday, November 7th. All that week, we'll have green lampposts lit in the plaza between the county's executive office building and the circuit courthouse in Rockville. This is a statewide effort that has the support of the Maryland Department of Veterans Affairs. Next week, you'll see the government house and the M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore also awash in green. I hope you find a way to participate so that we can see more of Montgomery County supporting Operation Greenlight. Budget forums that focus on fiscal year 2024 are right around the corner. These meetings give the public several opportunities to weigh in during the early stages of the budget process and bring the county's attention to items that you feel need to be considered for inclusion. This year, there are eight meetings scheduled between mid-November and mid-December. Some of the forums will be in other languages like Spanish and Chinese. You can get a look at where these budget meetings are being held and sign up to speak by going to montgomerycountymd.gov slash opi slash budget 
forums. You'll also find information there about attending virtually if you wish, but getting input from the public is one of the crucial steps in developing a budget. We want to make these forums accessible and interactive. I encourage residents to participate in these discussions because they're for you after all. No matter where you live or your age, I want to hear from as many people as possible. We have been fortunate to maintain a very strong financial position throughout the pandemic, including the award of our 50th consecutive AAA bond rating earlier this year. Being in excellent financial standing enables us to consider projects that other jurisdictions may not be able to finance. Through our budget, we will continue to support programs and services that are important to residents. This month, we celebrate the contributions to our nation by Native Americans with Native American Heritage Month. Their culture and traditions proved to be an example for our forefathers long before we became a nation. The indigenous people of this country have shown remarkable resilience in the face of tremendous challenges, especially the expropriation of their land and their displacement from their tribal homelands. I encourage everyone to learn more about these great people. Their struggles and contributions are an important part of our story. And I encourage all residents to please take a moment this month to teach, learn, honor, and appreciate our Native American history and heritage. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you again next week.